So next up, um, uh, thanks to sponsors, uh, TOBA, the Thoroughbred Owner and Breeders Association, and also the local, the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, we're happy to have Lauren Monet and Meredith Downey here once again to help us understand that TOBA's owner seminars are for us. And I think it's very important that we um, help in those processes and we help initiate getting new owners into the game. I don't think it's uncommon for everyone to hear a lot of the time, I know I've said it, uh, I don't think we have a horse shortage, we have an owner shortage. So we need to make sure we continue to facilitate that as well. So before Meredith and Lauren come to the stage though, I do want to give a very special thanks to them for being here and helping us out and hopefully we can give them uh, the opportunity to speak. So Lauren is the Director of Membership for the Owners Concierge for TOBA, and Meredith is the Director of Marketing and Education for TOBA. Come on to the stage. All right, good, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lauren Monet. I'm the TOBA Owners Concierge and Director of Membership. And today, we just want to give you a brief overview of what TOBA is doing to bring more people into this wonderful industry. So uh, TOBA's mission is to improve the economics, integrity, and pleasure of the sport on behalf of owners and breeders. We're a membership organization with members all over North America. Our focus on membership is driven by the desire to expand the industry. In our experience, once casual racing fans commit resources and leverage benefits, they become more involved, more invested in the industry. One example of these efforts is the Ownerview.com and the Thoroughbred Owner Conference. Ownerview.com is a joint effort spearheaded by the Jockey Club and TOBA to encourage ownership of thoroughbreds and provide accurate information on many aspects of ownership, such as trainers, public racing syndicates, the process of purchasing and owning a thoroughbred, racehorse retirement, and owner licensing. The need for a central resource to encourage ownership was first identified by a comprehensive study done by McKinsey and Company in 2011. In 2012, the OwnerView website was launched. Jockey Club and Gary Falter have done a really great job of making the information on ownerview.com accessible to industry participants at all levels. In addition to the resources at ownerview.com, the Thoroughbred Ownerview Owners Conference is an excellent example of efforts to increase industry participation and reinforce that commitment. The goal of the conference is to educate, inform, and entertain new prospective and current thoroughbred owners through a series of panels and social events. At the 2019 conference, panels will include discussions pertaining to racing syndicates, a very popular topic, aftercare, another popular topic, horse racing at the claiming level, jockey participation before races, kind of a behind the scenes in the jocks room, and pedigrees. In addition to the panels, conference attendees will have the opportunity to attend Breeders' Cup events, such as the Rude and Riddle Post Draw, workouts from the Breeders' Cup trackside breakfast marquee. Attendees will also be able to attend networking lunches and dinners, especially for conference guests. So here's a few conference details. This will be the sixth year of the conference. The dates are October 28th through the 30th at Santa Anita. There will be nine panel topics. The full schedule is available at ownerview.com. Presenting sponsors, Breeders' Cup and Stronach Group, and Breeders' Cup tickets are included with the price of registration to the conference. So for those of you who have members of your state associations who are looking to become more involved in the industry, ownerview.com can be a resource for them, and the ownership conference is a great opportunity to gain knowledge and confidence needed to become more involved. Another example of industry expansion and streamlining are the efforts um, that TOBA has undergone 
and helping form the National Racing Compact. For more than 30 years, the paramutual horse racing industry in North America has been seeking a vehicle to provide national racing license for participants who race in multiple jurisdictions. Two issues have really been at the core of, this, of the licensing issue. The different criminal history criteria used by each state in determining eligibility requirements of obtaining each state license. The sharing of criminal, and the sharing of criminal history between those jurisdictions. As a side note, the vast majority of those applying for racing licenses have zero criminal history. Yet it's still uh, the main issue with this licensing argument. For those who are interested in, um, in this license, applicants need only submit an application which is available online, a passport photo, which you can get at any Walgreens, a fingerprint card, and the application fee. That application fee is $225, $200 if you're a TOBA member. Once the, TOBA, once the applicant submits their application fee, fingerprint card, it's then NRC's job to funnel those, that information out to the various jurisdictions that you've requested a license in. For example, if I was a part of a racing syndicate and I wanted to go see my horse run in Florida, uh, Kentucky, and um, maybe New York, I would apply to, or send my application to the NRC with my application fee and the fees associated with each state's application. So I want the New York three-year, I want a Kentucky and a Florida. So I send all those fees in and they handle the application process. So let's say at the last minute, the syndicate's gonna run um, in another state. I can call up the NRC or send them an email within 24 to 48 hours and they will take care of that application process uh, on, a, on a really uh, short notice. Uh, so what our members are really drawn to, and I got a call about this just last week, uh, a member completely overwhelmed with the application process and all these different states that her syndicate's running in. Uh, so the NRC is a great tool for those who are new to the industry and those who are seasoned veterans uh, to streamline that application process so that you can focus on, on other issues. Another TOBA, TOBA program aimed at making racing more accessible is the owner's concierge. From our experience, we've learned that if a new or prospective owner has a challenging experience on race day, it has an impact on their future participation. My goal with Owner's Concierge is to be a resource for our members who are new to the industry or visiting a track for the first time. Admission, dining reservations, parking, horsemen's relations, and paddock passes are all issues for first time track visitors. So I get calls on a regular basis. I'm headed to fairgrounds for the first time. I'm headed to Tampa Bay for the first time. What do I need to know? Where do I park? Do they have a clubhouse? Do I get clubhouse admission with my TOBA membership? They've got a lot of questions. So we want to really demystify that experience so that they keep coming back to the track. An example of TOBA's representation on an international level is the International Thoroughbred Breeding Federation. In the fall of 2018, TOBA hosted the ITBF conference. This was the first time the conference took place in the United States in more than 20 years. So we really felt it was a big honor. We had participants from 22 countries in Lexington with the purpose of showcasing US breeding and meeting with those from other countries to discuss thoroughbred racing and its global impact. Top of the list of, of topics, biosecurity, especially with regards to international transportation. With the globe becoming smaller and smaller and, and US owners shipping their horses all over, um, all over, the, all over the world, biosecurity and, and those protocols are becoming more critical than ever. Of course, there were health and wellness issues and issues that various countries have currently um, with infectious disease. TOBA will continue to work with the ITBF and represent the interest of US owners and breeders on an international level. For anyone that's interested in TOBA membership, conference participants will receive a discount. Please feel free to contact me, reach out uh, after our meetings today, and I would love to give you more information. And with that, I will turn it over to my colleague, Meredith Downey. Thank you. Can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> 
trouble hearing? Okay. Well, I'm normally loud, so people always say, oh, she talks so loud. Um, okay, well, good afternoon. Um, I know I've met several of you all at check-in, uh, but again, my name is Meredith Downey. I'm the Director of Marketing and Education for Thoroughbred Owners and Breeders Association. Um, I want to thank Eric for inviting us so we can share some projects and, and initiatives that we have going on currently and plans for the future of uh, education. I know that's really important to Eric and, and uh, us as well, so I'm excited to share this with you. Um, my main objective at TOBA is to create and execute education seminars at tracks, farms, and auction houses across the country. Uh, most recently, I was in Ocala last week for a pedigree and confirmation clinic where we had 20 individuals uh, from seven states attend that afternoon. These seminars uh, allow for a deeper understanding of pedigree and confirmation theories, and it provides resources and access to individuals within the industry. Um, this is a great way to gain new tools um, for peer-to-peer -peer interaction. Pretty much when we all kind of share experiences and have a space to ask questions of what's going on, the more educated we become and everyone wins. For years, TOBA has worked with farms and professionals within the industry to execute ownership seminars, breeding clinics, and other programs that support education. However, with today's landscape of instant access and Google at your fingertips, we are taking a look at how we can better provide more current content that's more readily available. Um, some examples of that that we're moving forward with in our, in our program are webinars, um, online interviews, Facebook Live, access to thehorse.com, live podcast. These are all going to be available for TOBA members and open to the general public as well. For example, access to thehorse.com podcast. Um, recently, we had a veterinarian on live discussing EIA, Coggins test, um, protecting your horse topics, and these are just examples of education initiatives to bring more information to you. And most importantly, we want that information to be relevant. Um, being relevant, it, it's a large topic that we frequently face. And I have this discussion with people often. It's what is it that you need to know? Um, what issues are you facing? Uh, we have an incredibly diverse group of questions just at the clinic in Ocala. Um, we had people discussing uh, respiratory infections and managing and preventing pneumonia and foals and the impact of lameness on your racehorse and hoof care and specifically environmental concerns. Um, so there's, there's a lot of need out there and, and obviously everybody's, not everything is the same. So we wanna be able to provide diverse topics, but topics that are relevant to your everyday needs. Um, this kind of takes us to a new program we added at the end of 2018. Uh, for the past three years, we've done an ownership seminar at Gulfstream the week of Claiming Crown. Claiming Crown is a partnership between NHBPA and TOBA envisioned to be a Breeders' Cup, per se, for claiming horses. Uh, every horse owner, regardless at the level of which your stable competes, has an equal chance to participate. This often features some of the most competitive horses in the country. For, for example, yesterday, the incredible achievement of Percy, the NHBPA claiming horse of the year who finished last year with 10 wins, which is pretty incredible. After several productive conversations with Eric, uh, we decided to partner and create an ownership seminar centered around claiming. It's an all too undervalued way to get into the sport, but it has a phenomenal impact on the industry. And I wanna to continue to have conversations like this, especially with everyone in this room, because I would love to see a relationship between TOBA and the state affiliates um, to include us at tracks or provide resources to you and your members through education that can help benefit horsemen. Um, that's what we're here for. And, and I think it creates a, a bigger conversation, but we are not just for, we are for owners and breeders, but really you have to be for everybody. I, we heard a couple days ago, you know, we all have to be ambassadors for this sport. So I really wanna be a resource for 
all needs uh, that you might have. One particular subject I have heard a lot from people that I wanted to touch on is cost of the seminars. That's been a big discussion that we have, and I think throughout the years we've had, uh, it's ranged up to $400 to attend these seminars. Um, and sometimes, you know, with transportation and food and, and things along those lines, but we've heard from state associations and state affiliates that their members would love to attend, but that's not feasible and that's not realistic. And there shouldn't be a limitation on education like that. The more access that we have to education, the better our sport's gonna become, the better ambassadors for the sport we will be. And it's just gonna help a, a ripple effect down the road. So. Eric and I discussed, and we were able to make the Claiming Crown, Claiming Crown seminar free. Um, I don't know if it's always gonna be free, but we definitely wanted to change that and kind of change the narrative and make it accessible because if you're willing to take the time to drive to Gulfstream and, and really put the work in, we can do the same. Um, same with the Ocala, I think Two years ago, the one at Ocala that we did was like $300, and this year it was 75. And I think we received 10 more people signing up. We received a lot of really positive feedback and, and questions, and I think a lot of information that they took back to their horsemen and their members, um, which was wonderful. So moving forward, we do have a breeding clinic coming up um, in Kentucky, and we've got another pedigree and confirmation clinic in um, August of this year. But if you have any questions or believe that your local track or organization would like to host a seminar, um, don't hesitate to reach out. My information is available, I think, through the conference. Um, so that's what we're here for. So I just wanted to thank you all for your time, and it's always great to be here. Yeah, does anybody have any questions? We All right, everything. that means we did our job and answered everything. Thanks for your attention today. And if you do think of that question we didn't cover, feel free to come chat with us. Thanks. Well, again, I want to thank you guys. And I do want to reiterate that the, um, the, the Claiming Crown uh, seminar, uh, and we titled it um, Make Your Way to Ownership Through Claiming. And I, again, I think that's extremely important. Uh, I, I know I stated that at the awards luncheon yesterday. Um, many people use that analogy, um, somewhat become cliche, that uh, claiming horse is the backbone of the industry, but in all honesty, that is the truth. Um, and so I had several people had, had um, discussed with me trying to, to set something up like that because there were people who just didn't understand or intimidated by it. So a really special thanks to uh, Gulfstream Park, obviously the Florida HPPA was supportive. The, the big support from ExpressBet, um, who provided all of our lunch and our meeting space area at Gulfstream. And special thanks uh, in particular to several trainers, um, Florida HPPA board member Joe Arsino, um, but we also had Mike Maker and then Tom Amos uh, spoke to him as well as Gulfstream management. So it was a really big success. Um, Meredith was actually contacted by people who couldn't make it there but wanted to do it. Um, so we are considering trying to set something up at Churchill sometime this summer and doing a very similar uh, claim your way to ownership seminar. So I appreciate the initiative and all the discussion and, and getting that done. So, thank so you. Eric touched thank on a really you. great point and that is a seminar at Churchill, an example of a seminar that Toba is hosting for the Churchill Racing Club is a day at Churchill. It'll be a day of racing and a seminar just for their club participants. So if there's a racing club or a syndicate in your state that's looking to expand its membership or looking for educational opportunities, that's right in Meredith's wheelhouse. She does a really outstanding job of uh, curating dynamic speakers and dynamic programs to get people really interest, more interested and, and more involved in the industry. So if that's ever something that um, someone in your state is interested in, please let us know. Thanks. Thank you all.